We had no idea what to expect from the food in Krakow. Come with us as we taste the city, and I get nostalgic for one of these traditional Polish foods. And I get a legendary breakfast. We were surprisingly impressed. <laughs> Welcome back to Finding Gina Marie, where we share our lives as full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. We plan to cook a lot more when we arrived in Krakow, but the flavors here just really blew us away and kept us coming back for more. So we thought it would be fun for you to walk along with us as we share with you our experiences on the different foods we enjoyed here. And stick around to the end where we give you the prices, some of the costs we paid for the food that was so delicious. Before we get into this, we apologize in advance for any Polish words we make a mess of or say wrong. We're trying our best. And most of them we will be saying wrong. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> our first stop was the old town of Krakow, and it had a huge city square. And uh, along the perimeter were a bunch of different restaurants. We had no idea where, I was, where we were going, so we just basically stopped at some place that looked interesting. We kept wandering around the square looking for indications that any of these restaurants were better and less touristy than some of the others. And fortunately, when I was looking at the menu for this place, there was a man who made eye contact with me and he gave it a thumbs up. So I figured it was a safe bet. Yeah, on-site rating, thumbs up, we'll take it. So right away, I knew some Polish foods from growing up in Chiktawaga. There was a lot of Polish influence in our hometown, but I didn't really know a lot of the variety, especially when they were in Polish language. So I found one that looked interesting. Uh, Shabove, which is basically all over the place in almost every restaurant. It's a breaded pork chop with usually potatoes and some sauerkraut with it or some cabbage with it. It's actually the best. <laughs> Plus, who, who would have known that cabbage would be my favorite on the plate? Which frustrated me a little bit because the menu was pretty broad and I wanted to try a couple of things, more tapa style for us to share. But Kevin's meal was huge. Not so a tapa. <laughs> Unless the top of the plate is what you're talking about, which you covered the whole thing almost. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I opted for something called Zurich soup, which is ubiquitous in Krakow. It has, as one of its key ingredients, a rye starter, so a sour rye. And so it has a tangy taste to it. And it also has white Polish kibasa and marjoram. It's got um, mushrooms and a cooked egg inside always served with um, a slice of bread to go with it but yeah it has a kind of an earthy taste which I think is the fermented rye but it's a really good combination and I could see that it would be um, something that I'd want to make for myself at home <laughs> cool in fact I looked up the recipe so that I can make it at some point on my own you're more of a fan of the sour stuff the rye and everything else and I just that flavor Profile doesn't fit me, but I'm glad you were enjoying that. Yeah, it was really tasty. I did enjoy my meal, even though it was huge. And of course, even though the meals were pretty large, we decided to sneak in a little dessert anyway because there was a cheesecake on the menu. Wait a minute. His his meal was pretty large. Mine was soup. Okay. <laughs> Still, I decided to sneak in some dessert even though I was very full. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't, I like, I like stuff on the cheesecake that's sweeter and the cherries on this cheesecake weren't as sweet as I like. So it was just okay for me. Yeah, but I thought it was a rich, creamy cheesecake and I love cherries, which is uh, in season right now. So it's everywhere. And, and just a little sweet. tart. Yeah. yeah, tart. Yeah. I didn't know you didn't like tart food, but. <laughs> learning, we're all learning. 60 years <laughs> later, we're learning. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> 39 and a half years of marriage. <laughs> I should know by now. I should know. I'm Italian by birth, but I was adopted and have a Polish mother and my father is German. And my father was a huge meat and potatoes guy, so we really didn't ever have a lot of Polish foods. I think my mother only made two things ever that were Polish, and one of them was something called gumpki. It's a stuffed cabbage with meat and rice and onions and it's in a tomato sauce. The Polish name is derived from pigeon, which is because the cabbage stuff like that resembles a pigeon chest. 
My father always preferred them with mashed potatoes, so of course that's how we ate them. Your father preferred mashed potatoes all the time. <laughs> right, in fact, this was one of the only times in my entire life growing up that my mother cooked with rice. <laughs> so we went to Cucina de Mova and their menu was interesting for lunch because it came with like three items in it. Uh, was it a soup, uh, a main, and then a drink with it? Mm -hmm. And the drink was a compote. Compote's just basically a fruit drink, right? Uh, mixed fruits. It's uh, fruits that are boiled with water and then you hold behind the fruit and you're just left with the liquid. It's sort of like Kool-Aid. Uh, sometimes you even add sugar to it to add some more sweetness. I didn't think that this was overly sweet at all. No, I, I, we had it a couple times and it wasn't very sweet. But it was tasty. My soup again was the sour rye Zurich soup. And this time it was pretty vegetable heavy and very light on the Polish sausage. But the sourness was still spot on. And I had a version of their tomato soup, which had some really nice, uh, small, but little elongated uh, egg noodles, which tasted great and were very filling. In fact, they were so filling after the soup, I was wondering why I ordered three things, <laughs> even, the, even the juice. It's like, I'm very full now, fluid and food. So of course my main was the guamki and it was fabulous. I definitely felt like I was in my mother's kitchen eating that food. I. My heart instantly transported uh, there. It was, it was just a, an unexpectedly delicious uh, recreation of... Memories. Yeah. It's so nice when food can take you back. So at our next restaurant, I again ordered the breaded pork filet. I thought I was ordering something different. I, Judy's like, really, again, with the pork filet? Like, it's on every menu, it's hard to avoid. <laughs> so we'll focus a little bit more on what I ate. Uh, this was a place specifically we came to in order to try potato pancakes and goulash, which is a combination I'd never really heard of before. The potato pancakes I felt like were a little more dense than I expected. And growing up goulash to, to us was a tomato-based broth with pasta. And I knew this wasn't going to have pasta. I knew it had meat, but it actually was a beef-based sauce, more of a gravy. Like it, it wasn't spicy or, you know, it was just a savory meal that was just average as far as I was concerned. But if you've had this meal, I'd be curious to know what your experience is and if it's different than Mars. <laughs> and again, because I had such a light meal of a huge <laughs> pork filet, we decided to have dessert and they had an apple cake. And this was a much different kind of apple cake than I've ever seen. Very thinly sliced apples and this kind of a, a crumble bottom to it that reminded me more of a cheesecake bottom, but a little softer. I don't know, it was pretty tasty. I don't think it was something that was remarkable, but I, I did enjoy it. Yeah, Kevin's a really big apple pie fan and Krakow really seemed to have a lot of apple desserts. So I think we're on this mission to try to find something that matches up to the apple pie that I'm not making while we're traveling. Yeah, she makes a fantastic apple pie. So I'm really spoiled. The bar is so high. It's hard for restaurants to compete. Sweet. <laughs> We didn't have a reservation here, but they accommodated us anyway. So the main reason we came to this restaurant was in order to try Bigo, also known as Hunter Stew, which I knew nothing about. It's a broth made with sauerkraut and mushrooms, Polish sausage, and also stew meat. Normally it's served in a bread bowl. It was not served that way here. Uh, he offered me a choice of bread or potatoes and I chose bread because I know that that's how it's typically served, but he, I wasn't eating the bread fast enough. And he came around twice to ask if I wanted potatoes uh, instead. Do you not like the bread? If you don't like the bread, I can get you potatoes instead. I said, you take a bite of the bread. He's, he's gonna keep coming back until he knows you like the bread. It was a very brothy soup. So I was waiting to eat the bread at the end and sop up the last bits of it. But I felt guilty yeah. that he's watching me. Am I eating the bread fast enough? Dad's looking, <laughs> eat some of the bread. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And even though I am not a meat and potatoes type person, Poland loves meat and potatoes. So I had a chicken breast, then some potatoes with it, and a, and a lovely mushroom sauce on top. I thought that was very tasty food. I, I appreciate the sauce that they've had in Krakow. So for all the meat and potatoes, let's bear in mind, they were not mashed potatoes anyway. Oh no, 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 no. 
Oh, your dad's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why my mother didn't cook <laughs> Polish food. <laughs> and of course, we got to try the desserts at every place just to make sure, even though we're full. And this was another apple pie that we found. Unfortunately, it was pretty bland. Like the crust didn't have enough salt in it. The apples didn't taste like they were seasoned. Yeah, they well, they were missing cinnamon. And I feel like I've never had an apple pie without cinnamon. The drinks in Krakow were really nice because a lot of places offered cider, which I'm a big fan of. In, in the US, hard cider. Everywhere else in the world, when you say cider, they know it's hard, it's got alcohol in it. And they have local brands in Krakow, kind of a soft and, and not aggressive apple cider and delicious. Right, it was good and crisp and cold. But it was hot there, so we did need cold drinks. Growing up in Chictawaga, which is a Polish suburb of Buffalo, New York, there were a lot of Polish families that always had pierogi. I never grew up with them, didn't ever taste them, but it's a Polish food, so we figured we'd had to try some. Yeah, because I grew up in an Irish household, basically, that never had pierogi. <laughs> so we didn't really know what to expect, and we showed up to Pierogi Mr. Vincent kind of late. Uh, they were closing in 45 minutes. Yeah, we weren't decided, we couldn't decide whether we needed a dinner or not because we ate a pretty late and large lunch. This caught our eye because Mr. Vincent, it's basically a nod to Vincent van Gogh. I do want to mention our waitress who was exceptional. She was like, no, just hang out here. I I will try to find space. I will do something. I'm sorry for the wait. You know, she's very nice. Yes, and it was well worth it. And they ended up getting somebody in even after us. So it worked out great. Pierogi are basically dumplings yeah. that are stuffed with various things. And we tried three. You know, 30 dumplings among two people was a lot. But we decided we'd have some for breakfast the next day. Yeah, we're going to take away, so it's fine. So what were the three types of pierogi we had? Our favorite was the Vincent, which was uh, beef, chorizo, and onion inside. Fortuitously, the waitress said that these were her three favorite dishes, and she helped with sauces. So this one is Vincent, so the namesake of the place. So uh, give it a try. That's really good. And it's just an explosion of flavors. Wow. The uh, onion is a good companion on the top of it, for sure. And then there was another one that was an ox, which was basically beef, mushroom, and onion. onion. Less spicy, because no chorizo in that one. And we had pancetta on the top of it. And our third type, which was our least favorite, was the Russian lift. Which they still were tasty. They had cottage cheese, potato, and onion. Bacon in there? Yes, bacon. But I feel like there wasn't enough bacon to give them the mommy that the other ones had. Yeah, less kick overall. So we came back at least two more times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and each time we always had the Vincent and then we mixed it up with a different flavor. We had some that were called Christmas and they had sauerkraut and mushroom, something that was Piedmont. And those were kind of interesting because they had- The soup broth. Soup, yes. We tried their summer specials, which were dessert based. Ours had blueberry. Yeah, we tried to get apple because there's an apple theme going on here, but <laughs> they didn't have those. So we had the blueberry and they were very tasty, uh, pretty intense for having, I don't know, that, that was a lot of blueberry. <laughs> but they were great for breakfast the next morning. Sure, I, I think I like blueberries with some cake around them or <laughs> muffin or, you know, I want a blueberry muffin. I gotta get blueberry <laughs> You're out of luck. Yeah, no. You're wearing blue, that's the extent of it. Okay. <laughs> So Judy saw people eating this wonderful food, uh, walking around on the streets, and she said, we need to go make sure we have that before we leave Krakow. So we finally made our way here, and I'm probably butchering it, but it's an area of town known as Plak Noe. Basically, new town in the, it's the Jewish square. And we see these while we are going around town all the time, and they're open-faced sandwiches, basically, uh, pizza on French bread, <laughs> the Polish version of it. And we finally are here to try some. There's several different booths that have them, uh, but one that was recommended to, to me is the Pichak version. And again, I'm probably butchering the name. Uh, a gruff old man <laughs> served it. You can tell that he's dealing with uh, people day in and day out, right. so he didn't have a lot of patience, but he, he needed to he asked for a lot of, well, what topping do you want? You got to point to a list, and we're both like, what would you recommend? He's like, ketchup. <laughs> but I think that's actually the common thing yeah. to be eating on it. 
and uh, we'll talk about the flavors that ours were. But I, I guess I'll just let you know that it's also a late night food. So this area of town especially opens up uh, late in the evening and it's perfect for people who are um, drinking at bars to then go and put something in their belly to kind of um, <laughs> ease the morning after. So uh, a little, little bread and grease in your belly. Yeah, it's always good. Exactly. The official name for these is Zapikanka yeah. from Pie Check. Both over and half, so we're not overwhelming ourselves. Mine's a chorizo one. I think I have mushrooms in there and some cheese, yeah. And what are you drinking? I am drinking a Miranda, an orange juice soda, some sort. So mine has a bunch of different kinds of meats and chorizo and some vegetables, pickled onions and fried onions and um, pickled cucumbers, which doesn't that mean pickles, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it a go. These are the half size, they're very hot, which is the winding around trying to wait for them to cool down a few minutes. It's very tasty. It's yeah. got a, an explosion of flavors and you can see why. Well, you, um, you chose a ketchup topping, which you recommended for both of ours, kind of. Yes. And But you got something on top of it, which I guess is the uh, fried onions. Fried onions, yes. Yeah. It tastes like a Polish pizza. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're eating Polish pizza. Good luck with us. Mine's easier. Get to it in a minute. There was one place we didn't go there, but they served bibs oh, no. um, so that you could eat, and that was actually smart. We didn't even get any napkins, and there were no napkins to be found in the stand we went to. And I didn't dare go back and ask because I was told ketchup, take your food. <laughs> but they were tasty. They were tasty. Sure, is a very nice guy. So for this next restaurant, we booked a day ahead because we wanted to make sure we could get in. It was all full of the day. We were actually looking to go to it. And by the time it actually came around for dinner, we were feeling maybe we don't need a big fancy dinner. We've been eating a lot of food here in Krakow. But at the last minute, we decided let's do it. We made this reservation. It's not that far away. We'll just take a walk and enjoy it. And I'm really glad we did because that was one of the most unique meals I had. Ooh. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, getting singed. <laughs> wow. So what is it that you have there? Uh, it's chicken and mushrooms and potatoes and salad. And a skewer of hot deliciousness. Uh, it's chicken kebab? Basically, yeah. Flat leg. It's cool. I didn't know that was going to happen. A lovely place so that was a really nice treat too yeah it's really got beautiful atmosphere people have commented about how much greenery and plants and everything bon appetit, bon appetit. i had uh, more pierogi this was maybe a more refined version than what we've had in other places mine is some duck filled dumplings with this whole cacophony of flowers. And it had duck meat inside with a cream and chanterelle mushroom sauce yeah. alongside it. So it was really rich and unctuous and uh, delicious. Very, I, I really was kind of sad that I didn't get them because <laughs> they were just so good. A lot of flavor and the duck made all the difference. A lot of places that you go, uh, duck tends to be dry. The places we went in Krakow that had duck, Always juicy, always delicious. My drink, which was a little unusual, was cucumber lemonade. And it was quite delicious and refreshing and tart. Again, we wanted to try some dessert and Judy found a really good one, but unfortunately it had walnuts in it. So she had this guilt that I wasn't gonna be able to eat the dessert because walnuts and pecans don't work with my system. And I said, don't worry about it. And the joy, enjoy the dessert. I'll take care of myself and get a cappuccino. And I went along with that, but this was the dessert that the waitress had recommended. And I was prepared not to get it. And she said, it really is a beautiful dessert. This is the rose jam, which is a specialty of the house. And this is dark and light mousse with some walnuts. And obviously just a lot of foraged fruits and flowers. And beauty. And mint. And mint. Enjoy. 
And that combination was very tart and was a nice foil for the bitter and sweet. I don't know, it was a really delicious dessert. I wouldn't know. <laughs> That's some guilt now. <laughs> nope. Okay. Because <laughs> I really do. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that's important to us is after we spend the better part of a week working on an episode to kind of take some time and just like celebrate that we've gotten an episode out. And so, exhale. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And this episode was our Airbnb versus hotels. So if you haven't seen it, you will want to check it out uh, below. We've got a link. Subscribe if you haven't already. And this restaurant really was just kind of a greatest hits. So what did we want to get was Polish food and some of the best tasting flavors from where we've eaten all throughout our time, which really was only 11 days. So we've shown you quite a bit of what we've eaten. Yeah, we've eaten a lot of Polish food. We really try when we go to a city to eat what the locals are eating. Originally, our plan was just to go back to the lunch spot that we had the Golumki that I grew up with. Uh, unfortunately, that episode took a little bit longer than we wanted it to be, so that restaurant was closed. It was dinner time now. And so I still wanted to get some, but we ended up with a more refined version. And it absolutely was delicious. It wasn't like swimming in tomato sauce like how I grew up with. Instead, it was more concentrated and really tasty. And we had nice seats outside. It was a very relaxing, very lovely dinner. Had a couple ciders, just enjoyed our celebration. Yeah, the waitress was super attentive, which was the, the way you want to end things. Exactly. What'd you get? I have no idea. <laughs> Stuffed chicken with um, spinach, feta uh, cheese, and Oh, with a um, dried tomato sauce on top. It sounded really delicious. It is really delicious. That is tasty. Very tender chicken. Two thumbs up. You liked that enough. I remember you're talking to the waitress and making a point to say, that was a really, really delicious meal. They worked really hard. This is delicious food. And it was hard to top some of the really delicious food we had in Krakow. In fact, I didn't expect to enjoy the food there as much as I did because I am not generally a Polish style eater. But, but how did we know? We, we didn't, didn't know, know what the food was going to be the, like. This place, this city was actually a food gem for me. And I did not plan on it being that at all. So we did finish off things with dessert. She said the chocolate mousse was really good but she recommended this raspberry tart right. because it was seasonal, it wasn't going to be as heavy. Enjoy that, it'll be better for you on this hot night. So we stopped by this hip cool cafe for breakfast and normally we don't have breakfast when we're traveling, we'll eat a croissant or something like that. But uh, this place touted their legendary pancake tacos. Pancake tacos. And of course, I see something on the menu that's legendary. I gotta try this. I found a place that has these interesting pancake tacos. Now they have uh, pancakes, obviously it's the outside. We have very loud trams and there's bacon and scrambled eggs and uh, like a hot sauce and onions, green onions, chives, there's a lot in here. <laughs> very spicy inside. Bacon, eggs, what's that to like? This is great, very filling. Thumbs up. But they were delicious. The only problem with them was they're really filling. I mean, pancakes fill me up on their own. And I had a few bites and it, they were really delicious. Certainly nothing to do with Poland at all, but <laughs> it was an unexpected uh, treat. So. I'm giving them the credit for it. I'm giving the Polish credit for it. Good job. <laughs> Legendary breakfast. <laughs> their cappuccinos were good too. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> but man, spicy pancake tacos. I'll forever remember those. <laughs> so we're really curious. Uh, maybe you know about Krakow. Maybe you have grown up with Polish food. We'd love to hear about your favorites in the comments below. What did we miss? I don't think we missed much, but if we did, please let us know. My stomach says we didn't miss much. So what did we spend? Polish currency is called zawate. Every time I see a menu item, I would divide by four because it's about 
four zlaty to one dollar U.S. So at Tawartska, uh, it was 173 zlaty for the whole meal. At Kuchina Domova, the lunch menu had a fixed price meal that contained a soup, main, and the compote drink, which was 39 zlaty. Which is an incredible price for the amount of food and the priceless transport to my mother's kitchen. At Pierogi, Mr. Vincent, total was 123 zlaty. That's $30.27. At Zarna Katska, total of 199 zlaty. Paisak, which is where we got our um, French bread pizzas, were incredibly priced. For a total of $6.98 US, <laughs> which was amazing. <laughs> At Fversky Stopian restaurant, we paid a total of 177 zwatta for the whole meal. $44.64. So that's it for now. With all of this talk of food, I'm getting a little hungry. We should not be hungry. We should be very full after seeing all those pictures and looking at all that food. If you weren't already subscribed, you're going to want to do so because we have more of Krakow and lots of other exciting places to bring to you. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like and head to FindingGenuary.com where you find Judy's journal. Lots of great articles there. Until next time. Until next time. That's my point. Oh. <laughs> this is just not making it anywhere. <laughs> You're right.